That's the smell of warmer weather. It's back to work on the boat. Got a ton of work to do. Let's do this. Sanding is pretty much all I'm doing for a while. And I'll give you a little look around here. Wait a minute, we gotta stop. First of all, I haven't updated you guys in forever. Winter has been crazy busy. We've been skiing. Here she goes, watch where you're going, Scout. I've spent the better part of the winter building an office for Betsy in our attic. And then there's the Hope House. Do you even know about the Hope House? Here's a little clip to tell you what's going on. time and now the weather's starting to warm up we can start doing some fiberglassing some epoxy we can start doing some painting and so I'm spending a lot of time out the boat getting things ready but there's a bunch of stuff I didn't show you that we did over the fall and winter that I want to kind of give you a couple clips of so check this out what I'm getting ready to do here is do my first test run I think I've burned up all the fuel that's in it, so we are getting some more fuel into it now. We are so excited about how great this little engine is running. I got a chance to get in there and do some work on the rudder. I laid up two layers of fiberglass on each side with epoxy resin. This is going to make the rudder super strong. Okay, I'm going to show you something. On these boats, 1977 Cal 29, uh, one of the problems is, let me show you here, this thing right here, this is the support for the mast. So this goes up, the mast sits right on top of this, and this is a solid piece of wood that goes all the way down and sits on top that piece of fiberglass right there. And underneath it, there is a metal support right there. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like. On these boats, for some reason, they made them out of galvanized steel, which was a mistake. When the boats are kept in salt water, that galvanized rusts really bad. And people basically take these things and completely replace them, which means you gotta pull everything out of the boat. It is a huge deal. When I was researching this boat, I knew that could be a problem. And I'm gonna try to show it to you. You see that piece of metal all the way in the back there? That is the piece. It is in great shape. It's in great shape! I'm so excited! That's a big deal, you guys, because that means I don't have to dig that part out. Have it fabricated out of stainless steel. So I'm super stoked that's in good shape. Okay, the engine compartment was garbage. So I cleaned it out, painted it, and you can see coming up right here, 
what it looks like after a first coat of some really good paint. After some thought, I was like, you know what? I'm taking that diesel tank out of there. I'm gonna clean that bad boy up and get it fresh and ready to go. Turns out there was quite a bit of sludge in the bottom, so I'm really excited that I took it out, cleaned it, and then later put it back in. A huge thanks to the guys over at Pew Marina for recycling all the old diesel that was in the tank. Alrighty guys, it's Saturday. I'm out here at the boat. I've got some friends stopping by today. Should be cool. I'm trying to get ready to install the engine here pretty soon. Once I install the engine, I can put a tarp over the whole thing, kind of keep it a little bit more waterproof. Getting a lot, of, a lot of water in here still right now, so bilge pump installs today. I'll show you what I'm doing. So I'm drilling a hole, and this is the, the hose. It's going through here, underneath, and then it's gonna come out in here and go out. I'm pretty sure I underestimated the amount of hose I needed. That's fine, another trip back to the store. All right, that's one sump pump installed. This is my backup sump pump. This is the one that in case the other one fails, when the water level gets to there, this one kicks on. This is the uh, save the boat from sinking. We're here with uh, Megan and Jim, and they're checking out the boat because they used to have a sailboat. So we got two quarter berths on this one. Oh, yeah. And then, and so what we're going to do is, we're actually going to do some kind of shiplap looking type stuff on these where we're tearing all that off and yeah. redoing that. Let me see. Thanks for having us. Thanks for the tour. Listen, anytime. Yeah, Love to have you guys, guys. back. Thank it, you. We'll have to, uh, we got to do something special when it's uh, actually in the water. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> Thanks for the visit. Jim, Meg, good to see you guys. Once the engine was cleaned up and ready to go, we loaded it into the back of the truck, took it back out to the boat, and began the process of putting it back in place. Here you see my neighbor Joe giving me a hand as Bear and I work our magic to get this thing back in the boat. As you can imagine, it was a pretty sketchy process, but we totally got it in. It was awesome. Thanks so much to Joe for coming out and risking his life as we set Bumble, our 12 horsepower diesel engine, back in place. Once the engine was in place, it was time to get a tarp over top of Clementine for the winter. This is a temporary establishment of tarp right now. I got the main thing in place and got some room underneath here. Got the heater going, hopefully melt some of the snow off. Pretty much snow all over the place right now, if you can see it. This tarp is getting destroyed after only a week. Oh! So clearly my tarping skills are not very good. I talked to the guys at the marina and they said, look, it's a boat, it's meant to be out in the weather, just leave it and pick up work in the spring. I took their advice, chilled out, and started working on other projects. I was able to do quite a bit of stuff for the boat at home over the winter, and then of course, working on the Hope House, working on our attic, travel for Christmas, and lots of other things occupy my time. I'm super excited to get started again on more projects for the boat, so look for more videos coming up. Thanks you guys so much for watching.